Hey, David Julin here, bringing you something new this week. This is our Wednesday night reflection. We're going to be presenting this each Wednesday night about 6.30. Uh, you may have a chance to come to a prayer meeting at uh, your church or go to at your church or come to our church. But here's a little thought for you to reflect upon. My scripture text comes from... Psalm 145, Psalm 145, I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will extol you and extol your name forever and ever. At one point in my life, I began to wrestle with the, the call into the ministry, a call into the ministry. And it went on for really a couple of years and back and forth, sometimes more acute, sometimes less. But finally, I reached the point where I felt compelled to really try to find out if this is what God was calling me to do. I finally had resisted long enough. I felt like that this was a place where I needed to go ahead and find out if this is what God had called me to do. And so... I applied to Southern Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. And there at Southern, I, um, I made the application. And as part of the process, the, the seminary stipulated, and I think wisely, that you had to have an endorsement from a local church. This would give some indication of your character, your desire to ministry, had you done anything in the ministry, and just saying that we stand up and we speak, this local church, for this person who uh, is decided to go to find out if this is a call. And uh, I, I do think it's important. I see why they did that. But the problem was I was still working at a job and there in that same town. I was a district executive for the Boy Scouts, and I knew as soon as... Uh, in Baptist churches, we have a vote, and as soon as that, that we had the vote that I was going to go uh, to answer a call into ministry, to go to seminary, of course, people in the town would know, my employers would know. So I was left with this really sort of um, conundrum there, and um, I, I really had to decide what I was going to do, uh, and if I was really going to step forward and do that. I was quite anxious for a while, but I finally, of course, decided that you know, this is what I need to do, and I had the vote at the church, and then uh, spoke, to my, spoke, to my, spoke to the people I worked for, and then later went on the seminary, and of course, all that turned out. But a recent devotion by uh, Gary Furr, who was a retired pastor from Birmingham, in the Reflections magazine, a daily devotional, had a line that really struck me and made me think about those times. It said, the spiritual life often begins with doing, while understanding comes later. So in the spiritual life, doing often comes before understanding. Fur pointed out the action words in Psalm 45, 145. Some of them extol, praise, declare, where the psalmist is talking about doing something in order to praise. Doing offers the opportunity to praise, and I think also to understand. Now, this does not mean turn off your mind, mindlessly parroting doctrine or commandments. We are called to love the Lord your God with all your mind and all your heart and all your soul. Uh, Paul says that we are to weigh the prophecies of our local church leaders and say, uh, evaluate them, whether or not they are, uh, test them and uh, separate the good from the bad. This is something that we are called to do as Christians, to test the spirits, it says in 1 John. I also know that Jesus spent years working with the disciples, talking to them, three years perhaps, answering questions, probing them, I think crafting them to be people who could think on their own as he would say quite clearly toward the end of his ministry that he was leaving them. So 
I don't think that we're called to just uh, be like mindly parroting doctrine kind of thing. Uh, I'm just going to go out and do it and not think about it. But I do think in our lives, for the believer, the spiritual life often begins by obeying and then God unfolds and allows us to understand. So obedience often brings about understanding. I think we see this pattern over and over in the Bible. Abraham is told by God to go into a foreign land. Going to go and find this land that is going to be his land and ultimately his people's land. And basically he says there in Genesis 12, when you get there, I'll let you know. When you get there, I'll let you know. Obedience becomes before understanding. We see this with Jesus in the New Testament. He says to uh, the man in John 9, he says, um, who's a blind man? He says, get up and go to the pool of Siloam and you'll be able to see. So the man could say, well, I'm blind. That doesn't make any sense to me. But the man was obedient and he went to the pool of Siloam and was able to see. You see, obedience often brings insight, enlightenment, healing, and understanding. Faith, it says, is the assurance of things I hope for, the conviction of things unseen. Um, so and I, that does not mean, though, that we do not seek wise counsel. That does not mean that we do not seek wise counsel. That do we not listen to those who are people that we think are of value. Uh, sometimes you need to listen to somebody who's uh, got the ability to tell you no. Sometimes we just want to listen to counsel of people that we uh, that we, we know what they're going to say, or they want to please us and say yes, like the, some of the old-time prophets who only wanted to please, tickle the ears of the kings of Israel. But I do believe this. In the spiritual life, obedience often brings understanding. Prayer and worship and study, small steps. These spiritual disciplines create an environment where it's not simply contingent upon emotions, it is the opportunity for God to shape us and help us to understand, to be healed, to, uh, to step forward. Sometimes we have what's called paralysis analysis, if you will. Uh, we are so, we have the inability to make decisions due to this overwhelming overthinking or afraid or too many choices. Sometimes we just have to obey. You know, not making a decision is in some ways making a decision. Opportunities are lost. It's wonderful when clarity and understanding send us on a journey or set us out when everything unfolds exactly like we thought it would. But I find in the spiritual life that doesn't always happen. So listen, that, let me let, reflect upon that, if you will, this week. Reflect upon that, that obedience, obedience brings understanding. Heavenly Father, help us to have the courage to be obedient. Help us the courage to have the steps of faith. Help us the courage to seek wise counsel, but also realize that understanding comes from faith and assurance. And Lord, we pray now that you would help us when we're trying to seek out and understand. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen, this is our first of uh, uh, weekly Wednesday night reflections. I hope you'll tune back in. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon.